Hello and welcome. Um, what we're going to do today is just kind of give the one on one on how we live stream uh, our lacrosse games. Um, there are a lot of different ways to do this. Um, it's evolved quite a bit over the past three years we've been doing it. Um, and it's been fun to see everything kind of go to where it is today, as well as the e ease of entry is getting easier and easier. So um, what we're going to cover, where to stream, that's going to be the biggest question that you'll want to figure out first, because it drives all your other, all your other uh, options. Second, hardware needed. This is where you can invest um, your money or your budget if you have that. Three is OBS and four is connectivity. I'm actually going to do three parts in this series. Um, first is just going to be this one-on-one. I'm going to cover everything overall. Um, and then the second, we'll be showing the hardware that we use. And then the third is going to be showing how we set up OBS and what we do in kind of our mobile environment when we first show up to a field. So make sure you subscribe, get notified when those come out. We're going to be publishing those all very shortly as well. So please subscribe to our channel and so you get all that information. So about me, my name is John Carlson. I'm a software engineer by day. I graduated from St. John's in 2007, uh, kind of those early stages of the MCLA um, as well. Right now, I am the offensive coordinator uh, for St. John's, along with head coach Derek Dane uh, and assistant coaches Adam Benny, um, Brady Camish, Riley Bame, and Kyle Mott. Um, fun fact, just to get everyone thinking, I was an extra in Mighty Ducks in 1991, so may have a familiar face. Um, if you can find me, kudos to you. It's a, it's a struggle. Uh, one thing I do want to stress is, you know, feel free to reach out to me. Um, my email is right here. If you need to, um, you know, ask questions, you know, maybe there's a discussion with your administration, anything along those lines, I can help um, advise you guys on what's going to be the best. And by no means am I the utmost expert at this. I can just share from my experiences and the learnings that we've gone through um, as we put this program in place. So as we saw a couple of weeks ago, January 30th, um, Bellarine uh, and Mercer played. It wasn't on TV. There was no set streaming plans. Um, and the coaches started like reading the article, the coaching staff and the an inactive player got together, Cameron here, and decided to just stream on Periscope. They picked up about 4,000 viewers. I know I jumped on, you know, it probably helped that people were, uh, you know, crazy for lacrosse and just wanted to see something that first weekend. Um, but, you know, we see 4,000 viewers on Periscope and, you know, just a, an inactive player in the stands holding up his phone. You know, it's a pretty cool thing and just shows the power of streaming as well as the ability to get those out. I'm not a big fan of Periscope as you'll uh, hear about a little bit later, but, you know, it just shows that people want video and people will absorb it. Um, you know, even if you are, you know, a small high school program or club team or whatever you may be, it's always, I think there's an audience and people just want to see lacrosse right now. And the better production value we can have in that lacrosse, the better um, the viewership is going to be. So why stream lacrosse? Um, it's kind of always the big question. It's kind of a newer thing. Like, why do we want to spend this time, money, um, everything along those lines? I think from the benefits that we've seen is really expanding our brand. Um, you know, we're getting into the homes and, you know, on the mobile devices, people that may not have heard of St. John's. You know, we are a small school in Collegeville, Minnesota, um, you know, with a pretty good, you know, base locally, but it's helped us to expand our footprint a little bit larger, as well as, you know, we can send out streams to our alumni, you know, great reaction from there. You know, our parents, especially now with COVID, we know that our fan base, fans in site, on site are going to be very limited. So this is going to be an excellent way that they'll be able to come out and see. When we travel to away games, if the other team isn't streaming, we will stream. So that really helps with, you know, parents so they don't have to travel or grandparents or, you know, extended family um, as well. And then the third is just, you know, there's the lacrosse community. People just want to see lacrosse. People will casually tune in, you know, especially if it's, you know, a slow Saturday or, you know, whatever it may be. 
there's you know that opportunity to just t- tune in as well. One thing that we kind of thought about as a coaching staff is, are we just giving people a free scout? In theory, yes, but this day and age with you know how easy it is to share with you know Huddle and you know the other video programs, um, we don't feel like we're giving our teams an advantage. Maybe we're taking away you know an email they have to send to a team, but you know we know that the teams you know are going to get video of us anyways. So we want to help with that brand. We want to spread that. We want to stream and really expand that base as well as it's been kind of a fun project for everyone involved. Um, it's been frustrating at time, but, you know, it's been kind of a fun thing to learn and, you know, see the evolution of, you know, with our student manager staff, as well as, you know, myself as kind of the leader of the stream team. So the big question that you want to figure out to begin with is where do you stream? I threw out kind of the base streaming networks that you know are available um you know that you can do you know zoom is blown on the uh, you know stages very very quickly here it's like hey can i just do a zoom call and invite people that you can do all these all of these will work um to be honest but you know there are advantages and disadvantages to each of them and we did you know kind of our research and as things have changed we've you know you know continued to you know look at what we have to do with these um and you know if we look at like something like espn plus we just don't have the production capabilities that an espn plus has facebook live has got you know a lot of things going on you know all these other things i think when it comes down to what we're doing where we're controlling we have a small production staff if we even want to call it that um it would probably come down to twitch and youtube um you know twitch is more focused on that gaming but it's got some really cool you know, abilities as well as, you know, Twitch is becoming really popular, you know, it's kind of a social network as well. Um, And then um, YouTube, YouTube's kind of, you know, the base and that's what we use. That's what I recommend for everybody who's just starting off this journey because it's free. It's got some really cool features, you know, from a technology standpoint, you can do 4K and, you know, 60 frames per second, but you know, most time we don't stream in 4K or 60 frames per second, but the option is there. Their, you know, creators channels very easy um, as well. So YouTube is is our jam. So as I kind of talked about, you know, why why YouTube? Why do I recommend YouTube? Why do we use YouTube? Um, usability. It passes the mom test. You know, we send out a link to all of our parents. We tweet it out. We get it out on Facebook. We, you know, send it. You know, and all of our marketing stuff. And it, it can be, you know, people are used to, you know, clicking a YouTube link, having the app on their phone and just be able to, it's not something new like Twitch or, you know, Vimeo or, you know, something like that. It is a, it is a source that people know and utilize uh, today. Hopefully, you know, maybe not everyone is a big YouTube, but, you know, you look at, you know, how many active users they have and it blows everyone else out of the water. Um, And I say accessibility as well, you know, big thing that, you know, I love to use when I'm, you know, reviewing film, reviewing things is, you know, smart TV. So instead of having to watch it, you know, specifically on a mobile device or on your computer and use a browser, um, you know, you can use your Roku, your Apple TVs, your, um, your Fire Sticks, as well as most smart TVs have that YouTube app where you can just pull it up and you can watch the live presentation or the replays or, you know, any of the stuff that we do put out on our channel. And then the technology. So I kind of talked about it earlier, but you know, YouTube as a Google product is constantly evolving. It's constantly doing really cool things, you know, from a creator standpoint, as well as, you know, someone absorbing it, just making it easier to get super high quality content if that's live, you know, or after the event uh, as well. And the nerd in me really likes all the metrics behind it from looking at our channel of, you know, subscribers and, you know, how they accessing it, you know, all those fun things that you can do to help cater, you know, your marketing or, you know, what you want to do. So, you know, nine times out of 10, I recommend YouTube um, as well. I know that, you know, sometimes there's a, you know, there's other streaming providers that, you know, have other, you know, features and, you know, can provide a true like help desk and support through it, um, which YouTube doesn't really have. Um, But the community and around YouTube of just like on Twitter and other videos that people have pushed out, I think it just, that's what bumps it up. up, So So this is a quick view of our channel, 
you know, nothing too fancy. We arrange things, you know, this is our 2020 regular season. We have our, you know, 2019 playoffs um, as well. And one thing that we do do is we make sure that, you know, the security on these, you know, isn't you know, at times public for everyone. Like this game right here was a, was a practice game that we had for our string team. It was a scrimmage, um, you know, against the NAIA school. And, you know, we said, we're going to go through, we're going to, you know, we're going to scrimmage you know, and we're going to run this stream like it would be a live game. So there were some learnings on it, but as well as we didn't, you know, we don't publish that out. We didn't push that out like we do our normal games uh, as well. Um, and we see, you know, we directly have, you know, 400 or so viewers, you know, our highest here, you know, I think was around 1400. Um, so it's good to see, you know, it's growing uh, as well. Um, kind of the big question is why don't we use Periscope? You know, we saw what the Mercer player did, you know, at 4,000 viewers on Periscope. Um, you know, probably the big thing with Periscope is its end of life is happening very soon. They're, they're published, Twitter who owns Periscope uh, published that in early 2021. So you don't really know the exact date of that. Uh, they're going to, you know, remove that. Um, and it's not going to be a product that they're going to have any updates. It'll be removed from your, you know, your Apple store and your Google Play store um, as well. The video recall is, you know, kind of poor. You can still click on the links if you have those. You can't build that channel like we saw with YouTube and, you know, have those controls, those metrics, um, stuff like that, as well as, you know, as Periscope is kind of built for the internet in 2015, um, you know, it's, you know, doesn't have that 4K and 60 frames per second and, you know, you can't really hard to do like, you can do it, but you know, it's a little bit hard to do like nice graphics and, you know, set it up appropriately. Like YouTube just makes it easier. And, you know, frankly, you know, most of those other services make things a whole lot easier than, uh, than Periscope as well. So if you, you know, just want to have someone holding a phone and that's fine. Um, Periscope may be an option for a couple more months, but you know, it's slowly getting, uh, getting shut down and it's, Kind of more intended for someone that wants to maybe you know hop on and do a quick vlog or something like that and not show a whole game like showing a whole game on periscope is uh can be pretty tough from a viewer standpoint as well as the, the person producing it so i'm going to touch on the hardware kind of at a hard level i will have a follow-up video so subscribe and we will go through the hardware that we use at st john's and uh, some of the decisions that we made that were bad some of the decisions that we made that were uh, were very good uh, as well. So first things first is you need a decent computer. Um, there are, you know, a bunch of different, you know, options. We can go through these, we can get into the bits and the bytes, but, you know, have a decent computer with decent RAM. Uh, you know, RAM, a lot of computers, you can, you know, put, put in more if needed, um, but, you know, four gig of RAM is pretty low at the end of the day too. Um, but the more RAM, the better computer you have, the easier it'll be for your stream, less lag, less crash capabilities as well. I know when we first kicked it off, we had a MacBook Air uh, that it didn't work at all. Um, we tried some, uh, you know, other computers and, you know, I think the best solution that we figured out is we have a gaming uh, style laptop that's got you know, more RAM than we'd ever need, nice graphics card. And that's kind of, you know, on the extreme, but, you know, test it out, test it out, make sure that it's going to work. And, you know, we use a laptop, um, but at the same time, if you know you're not going to be, you know, portable or you don't care about portability or, or power, um, you know, a tower is going to be great too, because the tower is going to be a little bit easier to, you know, beef up from a RAM capabilities or swap in a new, you know, video card or something like that as well. So just something to keep in mind, but, you know, with a computer, you know, it's, you know, if you have something halfway decent made in the past five years, you're probably going to be fine, um, but test it out um, and you'll be, you'll be able to figure out real quick if it's going to work or not. So for cameras, um, these are kind of the four categories, I would say, of, of cameras. Um, you know, we have kind of the basic camcorder. It's what, you know, the Sony Handycam, which has been on the market for a long time. Uh, Canon Vixia, there's a lot of other ones that fall in this, um, this, this category. Um, and with all of these, what you really wanna look for is do they have a clean HDMI out? So with that HDMI out, 
you know, you can have micro HDMI, mini HDMI, but we need a clean HDMI out signal um, that then we can then absorb by the computer, blast up to the cloud. Um, that's what we're looking for um, as well. And then there's so many different price points of these, you know, different handy cams. This is kind of a basic one around that, I think it's like 250, uh, 300 bucks, somewhere in there, brand new. You can find a lot of this stuff used I know that you know we have some cameras that are pretty old, but they do have that HDMI out that makes it pretty easy as well. So if we go on to the camcorder professional, um, these camcorders are typically in that you know twenty five hundred dollar, two thousand dollar range, um, and you know they have a lot of features on them, a lot of different you know audio inputs, you know the menus are deeper, different lenses, stronger battery life, just you know basically moving it up from you know, the capabilities of these basic camcorders. Um, you know, our program, we haven't purchased one of these, but we do have access it through our library and our media services group um, where we can check these out. So instead of having to make that, you know, $2,500 investment on a camera that we're gonna use, you know, 10, 15 times a year, um, we can utilize, you know, the school's resources and kind of share those, um, you know, across the, uh, the different teams and, you know, different sources that need these. So. You know, these are a little bit more complicated when it comes to, you know, setup and getting it perfect, but, you know, it is, it does make a difference. You do get a clear image. It's just kind of that learning curve where it's kind of point and shoot for the basic ones uh, as well. So if we go down to the DSLR or mirrorless cameras, um, you know, there's so many on the market um, right now. These are, you know, typically you're, you know, you're, they're, they're made for, you know, point and shoot, but they also have a lot of great video capabilities. You know, you can find these in the 600 to, you know, $20,000 uh, range. You know, you can switch out different lenses, you know, anybody that, you know, is getting into photography. And I know that's a big thing lately is, you know, different, you know, different things you can do with, you know, nice photography is you can, utilize these. We also check these out from our, our library and they have, you know, some great options in it um, as well as clean HDMI out to make it uh, visible. Uh, the last one is kind of that GoPro. Um, GoPro is, it's nice because it's small, it's portable, it's easy. You can put it in different places. You, it does have the HDMI out. There are some cool things you can do from like a, a wireless capability that's a little bit more advanced. You can just run, you know, a cable just like you would any of these other cameras directly into, you know, your, that's your hardware, but it is, you know, an option, especially if you want to have it as an extra camera or you're putting it, you know, somewhere special um, as well. So the big thing too is the capture card. So a capture card will take the image from your camera, um, digitize it, um, and then make it so your computer can can read it before it's posting to the to the web. There's a lot of different capture cards on the market, um, you know, and they've even you know since we purchased our last capture card, they've you know changed drastically. As well as there's a lot of options that are kind of Amazon no name offshore uh, things that I've you know read about that have great options you know in that twenty to thirty dollar range, um, but then sometimes they're terrible. So you just have to do your research on your capture cards. I provided some links below that have some, uh, you know, some options that I've read about or used. And you can spend between $30 and, you know, $150 um, on these. Probably like the standard one that is probably the most popular is the Elgato Cam Link. Um, sometimes it's hard to find because it's that popular, but, you know, from the gaming industry to everything else, as well as the Flint uh, 4K products, those are really nice uh, as well. We have a 4K um, switcher, I mean, a 4K capture card, but, you know, we're not using 4K cameras, so it doesn't really matter. Just, you know, when we get to that, then we won't have to upgrade the capture card if we're still utilizing that. So that is a big piece of it. So you take that HDMI out, you plug into the capture card, and the capture card typically goes USB into your machine. The other option is kind of a, a switcher. So kind of the two big switchers, um, you know, on the market for, you know, kind of a price point, you can go spend, you know, a hundred grand on a, you know, a ESPN quality switcher, but in our price point of what we're trying to show here, it's probably going to be your Blackmagic ATEM Mini is kind of your most popular kind of 
change the market. And then there's the Live Pro L1. That's what we have. Um, that just has some other features that the uh, Blackmagic Mini didn't have um, as well. So what this does is you're able to not use a capture card and you're able to plug in um, cameras, typically those, the Mini and the Live Pro. There's four HDMI inputs, so you can hook up four cameras. Um, and you know those are all corded uh, cameras as well. There are some options to do like wireless cameras, but we haven't done it just due to cost reasons, you know, in that $300 or $500 range just for the wireless capabilities. We just haven't done that yet. I think it'd be cool as kind of maybe our next step um, to get some more wireless camera capabilities. But for right now, you know, having four wired cameras is a lot to manage and a lot to handle um, as well. As, and if you don't have four, you can just plug one in and it's nice because you can separate audio. You can kind of handle a little bit more than you will with a uh, just a standard capture card. So audio. Audio has been one of our biggest struggles as a team um, because you know it takes a lot of knowledge that I just didn't have um, as well as you know, people producing that audio um, is sometimes tough to find. Um, you know, over our, our past seasons, we've had three games where we had play-by-play, -play, and it was awesome. We had, you know, two guys who were who were really good at it. To you know, understood, you know, not to swear, not to say something stupid, not to be a bro on the um, on the stream, and it added a lot. But you know, I've jumped on or viewed other streams where it's an instant mute um, just because it doesn't add anything. Maybe it's, you know, you're getting a lot of cracking, you're getting a lot of things. So audio, it's kind of, you know, be cautious with it um, as well. I'm kind of show you our audio setup as well and, you know, how we've done it as well as most cameras do have, you know, an external microphone. So if all you're looking for is just kind of, you know, maybe you have an announcer that, you know, is loud enough and it'll pick up that and just kind of the base field noise, it'll pick that up. It's probably not great and you'd have to you know monitor it but it is it is an option um, as well so I'll kind of go through the base audio setup uh, right now so right now we have you know kind of the four things that we've played around with and there's you know there's a lot of different microphones a lot of different price points um, that you can that you can get in uh, to with these um, you know you can use the USB mic which is probably the easiest um, you can just plug it directly in. The Blue Yeti is probably the most popular. The Blue Snowball, you see those a lot in like podcasting and, you know, kind of base things. Those work really well indoors. Outdoors, it's a little bit more of a struggle. Um, and then you can change kind of the, the, the field of that, that it picks up from. So you kind of have, you know, the where, it, where the sound comes from. And with these USB ones, especially the higher end ones, you can kind of control. Is it, you know, all around? Is it just directly in front of you? Um, as well. So shotgun mic, um, you know, shotgun, if you want to do, you know, direct audio or an interview, that's kind of the boom mic that you see maybe on like reality TV or something like that. It makes it so you can pick up and it has kind of a thin line that it picks up on. Um, but, you know, it can extend pretty far. A lot of the times you use these for like game noise, on field sound, you know, the crunching of the pads at the face off and, you know, guys, you know, talking and you know just kind of the cool field level noise um if you're gonna be doing that just make sure someone's monitoring to make sure it's not overpowering or you know it's not just background static as well um but you can really enhance your stream with some good uh you know field level noise like the nfl films is one thing that's awesome is you know the crunch of the pads and you know those kind of things that really adds um enhancement to your stream um the over the ear cardioid, cardioid mic, I know I'm pronouncing that wrong, but um, is kind of the standard for play by play. This is kind of a cheap one that uses the three and a half millimeter. Um, you know, the best ones, you know, are going to go to an XLR. And then, you know, then you go into your mixer as well. You know, there are some basic ones out here that just go to three and a half millimeter. Um, and then um, kind of the one that's nice too is these you know, cardioid dynamic um, microphones. And they, you know, both of these require kind of a power source. So it's not just like you, you're plugging into your, you know, iPod and, you know, I'm really dating myself there. But in and go, there needs to be kind of power that, that then um, helps, you know, 
power these microphones. So there's a lot of different options, a lot of different things when it comes to microphones and what you want to do and what you want to spend is probably the biggest, um, biggest option in it. And then, so for an audio interface, you know, or a mixer, you know, I, you know, there's, you know, a lot of different things you can do with that. Um, there's, you know, these are kind of getting enhanced, getting more and more enhanced because of, you know, all the podcasts that's happening and these are getting better and better. But one of the big things is, you know, what is the output that your mic has? Um, you know, probably the big, you know, in your traditional professional, the semi-professional, you'll have an XLR, which is kind of the big three pin, um, microphone going into your um, mixer, you have your quarter inch, which is kind of like your, your guitar amp, and then your three and a half, which is kind of a standard um, that we see on, you know, smaller things or basic. It kind of goes, you know, these three, or RCA, you don't see that much anymore, um, but these three kind of from a cost perspective or, you know, quality, you can kind of go up, but you can get really cheap XLR mics as well too. Um, and I'll talk about why we went with some three and a half inch mics. It just made things a little bit easier. Um, for us to manage uh, with, um, you know, the options as well as portability. And, you know, we fell into a couple things, you know, by mistake as well. So these are kind of what you want to look at. And then you kind of look at a mixer. Um, in our follow-up, when we talk about equipment, I'll kind of go through a few different mixers as well. But there's a lot of different ones on the market. You know, if you want to really, you know, do a great job in audio, all the Zoom ones are really awesome. Um, those are typically used for more podcasting and there's, you know, a whole bunch of different options that we'll cover later and I'll show you as well. So peripherals, um, if you have budget, this is where your budget will get eaten up real quick. Um, you know, it's looking at tripods, it's looking at ethernet cables, it's looking at, you know, adapters, you know, extra cables, you know, tape, 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 tape. We always have to use tape, especially if we're, you know, in an area where, where there's people and they're running cables, we got to tape that stuff down. We got to, um, you know, make sure that isn't going to be a hazard. Um, gaffers tape or duct tape, you know, always works. Uh, power blocks are nice. A lot of our equipment is, has the option for USB power. So if we don't have um, power at our disposal, we can, you know, use our power box as well as they're nice to have. If, you know, you're just charging your phone or you need to, you know, charge something up at halftime or something like that. Uh, USB card readers, um, it's always nice. So you can, you know, throw stuff on really quick um, and I just have the ability, especially, you know, some computers have this built in, um, but a lot don't. And it's just nice to have that ability and not be stuck where you got to find someone uh, with a computer that has that uh, built in. But redundancy and all this stuff is important uh, as well, because I know we've, you can never have as many, you know, adapters and cables. There's always one uh, you're missing. And, you know, this is cheap, but it does add up as well. Connectivity. This uh, will be probably the most difficult thing that you're going to experience um, because there's such a variability from day to day to, you know, what's happening, um, you know, on campus or, you know, who's going to be there at that specific time as well. But, you know, I'll kind of talk about it from a, a high level aspect. So the, the best is going to be a wired connection. So if you can get a wired connection into whatever network you're connecting to, that's going to be your best. You don't have to worry about, you know, connecting to wireless or dropping or anything like that. Just having that, that plugged in is going to be the, the best, um, you know, and I would say check those as well. I know I've been in plenty of press boxes and other areas where there is, you know, what appears to be network cables and they're not connected or, you know, they're not, you know, active at that point in time. So, you know, it's, it's important to test those as well. Um, probably the next is going to be, you know, 5G or LTE. You know, the explosion of 5G is going to change, you know, how we stream as well. And especially when you get towards, you know, metro areas like in Minneapolis and, you know, Chicago, everywhere else, you're going to have the option of 5G, which, you know, is extremely fast. Your upload times are unbelievable, you know, and you can still use your devices. Um, we've streamed full games with LTE, um, you know, in, in rural Indiana. We did this with a um, 
a hotspot and LTE and it, it worked great. You know, it's just sometimes it doesn't work that great. Typically um, with LTE and using the hotspot on like your iPhone, um, we've struggled a little bit with that um, where we just haven't got the results that were, that were needed because, you know, I don't know if the phone, you know, has the pass through for everything that it's doing or what it is, but I'm excited to try 5G with that. I know that, um, you know, with being able to uh, jump on 5G and use that as a hotspot, I'm excited to see, you know, how that actually works, as well as they do, you know, your Verizons and your at and do have 5G hotspots as well. Um, we haven't purchased one, but I kind of want to check out the phone first and then see, you know, if it's going to be made sense to make that uh, and make that uh, investment in a 5G hotspot. And then the last is just going to be your basic wireless. Um, you know, this can be fine. Um, it can be also be miserable. Um, it's all about testing the connection and try not to use a guest network. Most guest networks are throttled um, and they're not going to provide you the speeds that you need. Um, as well as, you know, one thing that we've learned um, as, you know, I used to work in the IT department, um, you know, for our school and, you know, there's a lot of different options and, you know, obviously they're prioritizing different things over the guest network. Um, so what we've done as well as when we're traveling or going to another school is you can either work with the, you know, coaching staff or, you know, the athletic directors, um, but typically the IT departments can you know, create you as a, a new username and password that's kind of temporary. Um, you know, if you, they're going to provide you like a direct port, that's awesome. Um, but a lot of times they have that stuff, you know, be able to create, but they just don't want to have everybody using it. And, you know, if it's only going to be for, you know, from the hours of two to four on a Saturday, it's not a big deal and, you know, can be set up. So, you know, your connectivity is all about planning ahead and then having a backup plan. Typically that's where you come to your your hotspot or you know your wireless capabilities. That's kind of your your backup uh, plans. So how this all works? So you know we got you know first we chose you know a way to broadcast it. So we chose the YouTube Live, and then it's you know we picked up a camera. We got a capture card. You know we're we're, we're sitting good. How this all works is a software called OBS, um, and OBS is an open source. Um, which means that the code is is known, it's public, and this is a free platform. Um, so what that means is, you know, it's you don't have to pay for it. Um, there are companies that have basically put their product on top of it, and then you can pay for it. Something like a Streamlabs, or you know, there's a couple other things out there that kind of simplify some things. I don't think it's necessary, but you know, you hear a lot of good results uh, from these. Uh, these products as well, but what it does is it, you know, it helps you to build, build your stream and basically takes it from, you know, a Periscope stream, an HD Periscope stream to something that, you know, is very professional and you can build out, you know, your score bugs on it. You know, you can add all these different, you know, applications, just like on your phone, because it is an open source platform. So there's different things you can do. We have replay on there. You know, there's all these, you know, there's, different basically uh, ways that you can do like a halftime where you're just running videos or pictures. Um, one thing you do have to watch out for on YouTube Live is they're constantly looking for, um, you know, copyright violations. So if you're going to be having music, you know, pre or post that come through it, just make sure, you know, it's royalty free items because you may get dinged. And I forget what it is, like two or three strikes. Um, and then you won't be able to go live anymore. So be careful with that. So don't directly play music um, over your stream if you're doing YouTube, because that may cause issues um, going forward. You know, a lot of times if it's in the background, it's not going to be picked up or, you know, it's not a, strong enough, but just something to, to pay attention to um, as well. So OBS, um, and I will do a whole, um, a whole video on how we set up OBS and what we do to make it for lacrosse. You know, there's a lot of great, really good people out there with YouTube videos that, you know, show different, um, ways to set up OBS and, you know, what we always do is we set up OBS long before. Um, so it's something that we can do the night before, you know, we set up if we want to do replay, if we want to have, you know, a little halftime thing that plays, if we want to, um, you know, you can set it up where for each goal scorer, you know, their name or their picture comes across the screen or, you know, you can get really fancy with it um, and makes it, you know, pretty easy. And 
if you're doing anything streaming, it is built around OBS and it's optimized for OBS. So it's just something to keep in mind um, of how important, oh, without OBS, we wouldn't be sitting here today. We wouldn't, you know, have a program because, you know, it'd be like going live on Facebook Live and just like showing the video. OBS really takes that to the next level and makes it a professional stream. Um, and you can get very deep in the menus. You know, it's a kind of intimidating, but once you kind of realize that these are the three or four things to do and you've documented that, um, then, then you're good to go. Like, we haven't evolved that much in, you know, OBS. We've added things to it, but kind of once you have that base and that foundation, it's pretty easy um, as well. So some of the resources, you know, we use, um, these are two channels that I've enjoyed. Um, you know, they talk about streaming in general, but one of the big things that, that they also do is, you know, there are a lot of gaming, but then they also do a lot of product reviews a lot of recommendations um, as well. So, you know, check check out those uh, those YouTube guys. And then um, Box Out Sports, um, they help create a lot of our images, a lot of our videos um, that you'll see on like social and will, you know, helps market our program. And, you know, that, that image that we started this off with, that cool image with the background and those things, that's created from Box Out Sports. So if you're looking to kind of, you know, bring your, program up to the next level, box out is there. And then OBS has got a, you know, a really strong community, um, you know, forum um, where people, you know, recommend things, or you can always post questions um, on there. There's a lot of, you know, recommendations from computers to, you know, use this Dell, don't use this Dell. Like I'm trying to, you know, I'm running into this problem. Um, and, you know, with the quarantine, I've seen a huge influx in videos, questions kind of in that basic level and probably the biggest driver behind that is churches streaming so worship services that are streaming and they're they're figuring it out and you know streaming a church service and streaming a lacrosse game is not that much different um you probably need better audio in a church stream than what you need to do from a lacrosse standpoint but um i've seen a lot of resources or just questions answered asked on the internet that kind of revolve around that but if you're streaming you know Fortnite or you're streaming, you know, a church service or you're streaming a lacrosse game, it doesn't really matter. Um, you're just trying to produce high quality, you know, video, high quality audio, and, you know, put something together that, you know, you can enjoy. And, you know, that's, that's really what we're looking for um, as well. So, you know, thanks for listening. Um, you know, shout out to our team who's put up with my my nonsense of going through all of uh, all of our trials and tribulations with it. But if you have questions, uh, shoot me an email, uh, reach out to me on Twitter, you know, either my personal account uh, or on the SJU Lacks as well. Um, I manage both those. So just slide into those DMs if you do have questions or comments. And then we will be putting out two more videos, one about the equipment and then one about our um, about OBS and the setup of OBS and some of the things that we've done um, in there as well. So I will also post a link where you can download this deck. So if you want to have it, you want to modify it, you want to do whatever, that's perfectly fine. And included in that, uh, the things that I've mentioned in here, um, I will have the list and then I either have Amazon or BH Photo um, links to it. Um, and there's some things that, you know, I didn't really mention, but it's a good thing to, um, you know, kind of scroll through and see things like, you know, the mini mixers, um, you know, microphones, shotgun mics um, as well. So there's a lot of different um, options in here and I will post this as well um, so that you, your team can, you know, excel through. So I appreciate the time today. Make sure you ask me questions if need be, or if, if you, you know, as we advance through this series, I'll have two more videos and make sure you check those out. So thanks a lot. And uh, any other questions, uh, you know where to find me. So thanks guys.